All right, I'm going to start with the, uh, this is the quarterly review. This is the time period, uh, July 1st to September 30th, but I know uh, more than likely we're going to delve into some other topics that have uh, recently occurred, including the, uh, the issues uh, the lady prior to me was speaking about with the speed and the uh, quality of life issues. So general overview, our full-time staffing uh, remains at 34. Um, we do still have currently one officer uh, out of service due to a due to related injury. I believe that is going to come to a resolution here very shortly. Um, unfortunately, the officer involved uh, is most likely going to have to retire due to medical conditions that it just uh, will not will prevent him from coming back. Uh, so we're still waiting to hear from that, but the initial stages with retirement and finance have started to take place, so I believe that's going to probably happen sometime around the beginning of the, the uh, new year. Uh, on Labor Day, September 5th, we concluded our summer season. Officer Jackson, Officer Kenyon, and Officer Sorokins served as corporals throughout the summer. Corporals serve as direct supervisors for our part-time special officers during our busiest times at the beach. Years past, the department utilized two corporals, but this year with the increasing levels of visitors to the beach, decreasing levels of experience with our part-time special officer ranks, and the utilization of officers from area departments, an increase in supervision was necessary. Our current staffing level for part-time officers is at 33. Uh, we began the season with 31 working part-time officers and two were on leaves of absence. This number remained fairly consistent throughout the summer. Uh, we are hearing, though, our normal uh, processes. We start hearing about some of our officers that are being recruited uh, by other agencies like Manchester State Police, Nashua, Salem. That's occurring now. There's three or four of them that I understand are in processes for other agencies, so we have the potential to start losing some folks early. Uh, the Hampton PD has four new officer recruits attending the 272nd New Hampshire Part-Time Academy scheduled to graduate on November 18th. As you recall, we ran a test back in April, so these are the folks that went to the academy from that testing process. On October 1st, another part-time officer test was conducted, which netted an additional five new officer recruits tentatively scheduled to attend the 273rd New Hampshire Part-Time Academy beginning in January of 2017, so that would give us a a net of uh, nine new officers that they all survived the training and the background process and all that. So we're potentially looking at nine com new officers coming on. Uh, history being what it is, we generally lose a few before the summer starts, though either two other agencies or other issues come up as part of the hiring process. As you can see, our activities, this is a reflection of the same period last year, July 1st to September 30th. Uh, we are up in every one of the reported reporting categories. Calls for service are up 21%. Motor vehicle stops, uh, kind of what we're hearing are all around town with the, the, the driving <coughs> issues we're facing, are up 48% in that time period. Arrests are up 32%. DWI arrests are up 28%. Drug offenses are, are up only 5%. Incidents reported up 3%. Offenses, 34%. Felonies, 46%. Parking tickets, 84%, and accidents are up 10%. Um, I don't know if you want to wait to the end or if we want to talk about statistics right now or we can move on to activity and then come back no, to it. No, just come back to it. Okay. The department recently concluded a busy summer season. Going into this season, we had a number of challenges we faced uh, with including staffing levels, the ongoing opiate crisis, and the level of contacts that the department was experiencing of in intoxicated individuals. To offset our low staffing levels, we continued the program of augment, augmenting with officers from area police departments throughout the remain, <coughs> excuse me, remainder of the summer. Recruitment for law enforcement remains a critical issue nationally. <coughs> I intend to continue the use of officers from other departments as public safety needs dictate, particularly in the preseason when we experience hot, busy days and schools across the region have skip days and the students descend upon Hampton Beach. Special thanks to the New Hampshire State Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Department, University of New Hampshire Police Department, Epping Police Department, Exeter Police Department, and the Green Police Department, who all provided personnel and equipment to assist this summer. During the third quarter, we had one overdose death. Unfortunately, uh, going into the fourth quarter, um, I'll touch upon it simply because we've seen a lot of it. Uh, we had five overdo overdose deaths with a total of nine for the year compared to seven all of last year. Okay, so our numbers are already exceeding. Our detectives are working diligently trying to trace back the source of opiates coming into the community. 
This effort requires a regional approach, and we are consistently working with our federal, state, and local partners. The Department continues to have an assign, assignment with the DEA Diversion Task Force. The Department continues to address the problem of intoxication and over-service of alcohol by coordinating with the New Hampshire Bureau of Liquor Enforcement. Hospitality meetings with those in the service industry have been co-hosted with the New Hampshire Liquor Enforcement Bureau, and along with compliance checks resulting in a number of establishments being cited. The Department also provided office space to the investigator assigned to this area. We concluded our summer season on Labor Day, but immediately jumped into our event season with the Seafood Festival. Due to incidents across the globe, enhanced security measures were instituted. I'd like to thank the New Hampshire National Guard 10th Civil Support Team, New Hampshire State Police Bomb Squad, New Hampshire Homeland Security Emergency Management, Seas Coast Emergency Response Team, and the Sea Coast Chief Fire Officer Association for providing personnel and or equipment that ensure a safe event. Other events included Reach the Beach, Granite State Wheelman, and the Smutty Nose Rock Fest Half Marathon. While all of our events drew large crowds, traffic and security issues were managed well due to the level of cooperation and coordination between both public and private partners. Events and good weather continued throughout the month, through the month of September requiring additional staffing as needed. Each of the events that needed officers for traffic and security was required to hire officers on private detail at no cost to the taxpayer. On September 16th, Deputy Chief Hobbs graduated the 265th session of the FBI National Academy. The FBI NA is a 10-week program which provides coursework in intelligence theory, terrorism, terrorist mindsets, management science, law, behavioral science, law enforcement communication, and forensic uh, science services to improve the administration of justice in police departments and agencies at home and abroad and to raise law enforcement standards, knowledge, and cooperation worldwide. With the end of the summer season, the department has been full swing with our training schedule. This training includes our own use of force and firearms training, but also our continued participation in the FBI Law Enforcement Executive Development Association. Three members of the department, Officer Karpenko, Jackson, and Kenyon, received the prestigious FBI Leader Trilogy Award for completing all three courses for the leadership series. And with that, I'll entertain any questions from the board. Any questions for the Chief or Deputy? Um, congratulations, Deputy Chief Hobbs. Thank you. Getting back from the FBI Academy. And congratulations to the three officers who uh, received the award. But most of all, I want to just thank Hampton Police Department, especially getting us through seafood festival season the whole summer with uh, no real occurrences because it's pretty scary what's going on nationally right now. And I think the police presence that we have in town is tremendous. Thank you. And thank you very much. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, I'd like to ditto that, and congratulations on the on the graduation from the Thank FBI. You. And nice to have young guys doing that. And uh, congratulations on a successful summer, and you guys do do a great job. And I know you've had some really tough weeks the last few weeks, and you know, thank God nobody's been injured or anything on the police force. And fortunate, fortunate. You've done a you've done a great job. Uh, all these things being up, like arrests up thirty two percent. Uh, motor vehicle stops 48 percent, DWIs 28 percent. I mean, that's really discouraging. It is and it isn't. Um, I try to look at what is it really. I mean, you know, there's an old saying: you got truth, lies, and statistics. Okay, and statistics can tell you different things. And I think you really have to look at what they mean in the town of Hampton. We have to recognize something with the improvements we've made in the community. There's more people coming here. Okay, there's just more, there's a greater volume when you go down there on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon and you see the volume of people that are down there. And then at night with the improvements that we're seeing uh, with our entertainment venues, there's more people. So there's some good to that economically, but we do have to deal with those other issues, uh, the increases that you're seeing. The other thing I'll attribute it to is a very dedicated group of, of professionals out there uh, working and just say, my, I look at motor vehicle stops, really tells me where we're at, because that is pure proactive police work. Okay, you're not waiting for a report, you're not sitting around waiting for the next thing to happen. In the absence of something going on, you're going out to find and to prevent. Uh, and in my history in this town, I've been here since 1979 and law enforcement 27 years, the best thing we can do with a community is to be very visible. And they were very visible. Um, and I think they made a difference. There's no more letting the little things go by, waiting for the big things at Hampton PD. We address everything we can, and we try to keep them, address the little issues so the big issues don't happen. 
And I think that's truly the mindset. And when we determined that we were going to add supervision, which was needed when we went to the third corporal, I think that's really played a part in it. Because if you, if you look at our staff right now, we have some very senior people. We have no middle class, and then we have very junior people. Okay, I have one officer left from the class of 2012. The next junior person is the class of 2003. So we have a significant gap in there. We have the haves and the have-nots as far as experience go. So you want these, uh, these young people to go out and really do the job and get the experience, but the only way that can happen without causing significant liability and risk of the town is supervision. So we took that step, and I think it's re really worked well for us. Uh, those guys did a great job, the corporals. They worked uh, probably the worst schedule in the department. Uh, they worked Tuesday through Saturdays and Sundays, uh, mixing it up between days and evenings, and you know, some of them were sweeping overnight in, in, the, in the locker room just so they could cover shifts for each other. So it was an incredible operation this summer. Um, very proud of them. Uh, but they did a lot of work, and it's just our hallmark. We train uh, better than anybody in the state of New Hampshire. And I'm not putting anybody else down. Nobody trains like Hampton PD, but we have to because of what we have to what we have to police. Go from a nice little fifth town of fifteen thousand to the biggest city in the state. Right. So, thank you. Do a great job. Go. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Deputy Chief Hobbs, congratulations on your <coughs> graduation uh, from the FBI Academy. Thank you. Very prestigious. Uh, like uh, the uh, old man sitting next to you, uh, you joined that club. Uh, Chief Sawyer, good evening. <laughs> I'm offended by that, but great, you know. great report. Um, I'm much older than you are, young man. Just, just wait. And uh, great summer. You hate to, you hate to jinx the summer's operations and talk about it uh, during the summer, but um, it was a tremendous performance of duty, like all of the departments. So thank you for that. Uh, this this week, um, and you'll you'll brief perhaps some of that yep. later. Uh, again, your job is a, a very complex job. It's becoming increasingly more so nationwide. Uh, nobody is. Uh, immune or ignorant of what, what's going on uh, with respect to law enforcement. The department that you two gentlemen lead is one of the finest departments in the country, and we're, we're very, very proud of you. Your report, the third quarter report, is very interesting. Thank you for the information. Uh, do you want to discuss uh, the state? Sure. I added uh, that back piece uh, several years ago. Uh, there was significant interest in what our activity was on state property. So in our... Uh, computer system, we have what's called sites. If you own a business, you have a site so that if we respond there, we just punch in the site and it automatically <coughs> registers part of the log. So we developed sites for all the different areas in the state or state properties that we respond to to try to get a you know an idea of how much time we're spending policing in state property. So that's what this is a reflection of. I do have a more uh, broken down by each of these sites what the calls for service were. I didn't think you wanted that tonight because it's, it's very in-depth. I can certainly share that document with anybody that wants it and just email me and I'll send that to you. Um, but it gives you a little insight as to what areas um, that we're spending a lot of time on. You'll look at things like the tolls. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time out in the tolls or the liquor stores because the New Hampshire State Police patrols those regularly. We have concurrent jurisdiction out there and quite frankly we're so busy that they're fine handling that. The only time we're really out there at, say, the uh, the liquor store is when the ambulance rolls. When an ambulance rolls anywhere in the town of Hampton, a crew is supposed to go with it, whether the state police is responding or not. We're there to protect the assets of the town and the risk of the town employees as opposed to what they might be doing out on the highway. Uh, but then as you look at the posts, you can see the significant increase. State Main Beach area, you have 56 calls in that uh, period. And then State Main Beach behind the seashell. 20 calls. We really narrowed it down to look at um, where we were going and what we were engaged in. Most of it is the disorderly conduct and the alcohol violations, to be very honest, without even looking at that broken down set. That's mainly what we're dealing with. Uh, we did deal with a number of complaints from folks wanting to know why the state isn't, you know, got cameras or enhanced security and all that. And, you know, we explained to them that, you know, we work well uh, with the state entity, but that is under their control, and, the, and uh, what happens there is, is under their direction. Um, I did have a uh, good meeting with Phil Bryce, who came down uh, just prior to the Seafood Festival, concerned about, uh, that was that time period when we had a number of terrorist incidents that uh, gained a lot of uh, coverage, including the incident over in Nice. 
and what steps we were taking and uh, what could they do to help. So we've had good discussions about what we were doing this year uh, and where we'd like to go with it. I don't want to get into too many specifics on it. Uh, it deals with security measures. Uh, but I found him very open to uh, my suggestions on what the state should be doing on their property and how to enhance security with physical measures, but also with law enforcement. Um, we're actually considering they have a small contingent of law enforcement that are park rangers, that are sworn law enforcement, that uh, with my permission, they'd have to seek for them to come down and work with us to be just another set of eyes out there, particularly down at the uh, south end of the beach where we don't get a lot of calls down there, but we're starting to see an increased presence um, of issues with drugs and alcohol that if there was a uniform presence there, obviously if there's anything of serious consequence that they would call us to handle it, but there would be just another set of eyes that uh, the state was paying, paying for. Uh, I inquired as to them paying for officers from Hampton to perform that function, that's a difficult thing for them to do because of their, their administrative rules and their budgets. So I don't think that's going to be anything we're going to explore. But I, I believe the communication is open. It's just what can we each do based on budgets and, and process. So. Yeah, thank you. And I, I found the, uh, the data extremely informative. Just for the quarter, for example, uh, your arrest, 21% of uh, arrests for your department uh, around state property. So nearly one in five during the quarter, if, if uh, I'm reading it right. 131 arrests out of your total arrests for the quarter. Uh, one in four, we are uh, taxing uh, our citizens and taxing our police department uh, that uh, is having uh, hard times recruiting people, as all, all platforms are, private sector and public sector. It's hard to get people to work today. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, it, ch it challenges our town. This has been an ongoing debate. Mr. Sherman was in here earlier. He's running for state senate. Um, there's an election on Tuesday. And these are the kind of metrics that will be valuable when we take the discussion um, post this election next week and uh, engage in a different kind of discussion in Concord. And both your data and other departments' data under, under Mr. Welch's leadership and Chairman Bridles uh, will be instructive in proving that case. And why is the Hampton taxpayer uh, spending 21% of the budget, because ultimately you protect the lives and protect property and uh, arrest people that violate law. And uh, we're spending 21% of our effort on state property, and we're unreimbursed by it. So it's an interesting debate, and it, it's one that will only be uh, augmented and uh, proved to be successful by this type of site data. And if we move to uh, develop that type of specific data from our other department heads as well, it's, it's a very cogent. Uh, and very uh, informed argument. So thank you for it. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for the briefing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. <clears throat> yes. Um, now, could you t uh, t mention again about the, the park rangers? Have we ever had those them here before? Actually, we have. Um, it, it's a rare occasion, but uh, several years ago, I remember we had a, uh, a late season storm um, that was causing quite a swell, and that they the, the governor, I remember being on the phone with the governor and uh, Jimmy Donahue, and we were all up at the old lifeguard station, and the discussion was about closing the beach because it wasn't safe. So how were we going to manage that because they were already down to their skeleton crew, and I only had so many people that we could offer to it, and they did send a couple of the park rangers down um, to assist in keeping people off the beach. So it's not unprecedented. Uh, um, it's just one of those things when we have law enforcement activities that are going to take place in the town of Hampton. I think we have to be in the know of how that's going to happen and coordinate that because you don't want agencies working against each other. That's why we have such a close relationship with the New Hampshire State Police and the Rockingham County Sheriff's Department. We let each other know what we're doing operationally. So we're not wasting efforts on something somebody else is already working on. And you don't wind up, you know, crossing in the middle somewhere where didn't need to. Um, so it's just one of those things where under New Hampshire law, I do have the control uh, as chief of police uh, of the law enforcement mission. Um, and it's, I'm open to bringing other assets. I think we've demonstrated that. I just want to know what they're going to be doing, what their role is going to be, and that they understand if they need our assistance, how that, how that works. So they have the ability to coordinate with you. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I think that's really good. And I've made a point of... Uh, 
trying to meet with as many people that are running for office to tell them about the issues that we have here in Hampton. And I've been pushing Phil's agenda um, with every one of them. <laughs> and I think they all, pretty much all of them, seem to be aware of it. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a good thing. And I think that uh, uh, this park, you know, I was recently up in the mountains. I saw park people all over the place there, rangers. I saw a couple of them at least. And uh, I don't understand why they wouldn't have them here too. Well, it depends. Are they the law enforcement contingent or not? Because oh, if, if I'm going to have them down at the beach and they're going to be acting in law enforcement capacity, I want them to be certified, capable of making an arrest, and armed. Well, it uh, sounds to me by looking at this, uh, these uh, locations that you mentioned, it would be something totally appropriate for someone that was a park ranger to go behind the seashell or in those ba in the bathrooms uh, or maybe just you know being helpful to the people in some way so particularly uh, in the future with some of the big changes that are coming forward um, you know when they get ready to redo the roads and stuff like that uh, the way they're gonna we're gonna be doing some crossing you know the, the crossings will be different hopefully mm -hmm. at some point whether it's four years or eight years down the road or whatever and maybe that's the type of thing that we'll need some people like that that could help facilitate all these new changes so I think it's a good idea and uh, congratulations um, Deputy Chief Hobbs for uh, it seemed to work very well for um, Mr. Yeah, he gets a 10-week sabbatical in the summer while I'm dealing with the beach. Yeah, that was great. That was a good deal. <laughs> well, yes, I bet you're on the w the right the same wavelength quite often because of your experience. And I think that it's uh, it's wonderful to see how close you worked with uh, other police departments this week. Uh, from what I hear, the people from Seabrook over there did a great job coming over here, too. Yep. From what I've heard. Um, we, I think one of the things we've all come to realize with the challenges we face today, um, you have to play well in the sandbox. You can't be, you know, we're Hampton, so we don't talk to the state police, or we don't talk. We just can't have that. Uh, it doesn't work that way, and, and you see what occurred the other night, um, that the response that we received from the Seacoast Emergency Response Team is essential for public safety these days. It's not, it's not a luxury anymore. I know some people think, you know, oh, you got tanks and all that, and that's just not the case. These are absolute needs for us to provide protection to our officers who are providing safety to the community. Um, so and the only way you can do that these days is being willing to share assets and, and work with other people. Uh, it's just the only way it's going to happen. Yeah, and maybe if we ask for these... Uh this help with like these park rangers or whatever will th the legis other people that are in the legislature that aren't running for office here will get to know what we're facing here in Hampton. Yep. Understand with the rangers that's going to be a minimal thing because there's not many of them to mm -hmm. be honest with you. The folks you saw around the folks I'm talking about um, they're very minimal uh, but it's one of those things that uh, Mr. Bryce seeing uh, obviously I think the video we all saw at the beginning of the summer uh, was a scary video of one of our officers being surrounded um, and they was on state property and they're cognizant of that and they were very worried about that what can we do to help so I think the the intent is to try to help what level they can provide that's going to be a different discussion but whatever I can get I'll get well good thank you very much for your report thank you so well, far. I, I know he called it a sabbatical but I'm sure there wasn't a person happier to be home than your wife and, <laughs> and family uh, but congratulations on you thank you you know I, I, I you know, he took that sabbatical too. He just didn't plan his as good when he did his. <laughs> I did it in the fall football See. season. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I was down on the beach a lot this year, and it was good to see our other communities, surrounding communities that came in to help that you brought in, and uh, they were all very professional. Yeah. I know that's raised. You know, it's it's a different way of doing it, uh, and I understand that. I've heard some mostly positive comments. Um, I've heard some people, I don't think I've heard anybody really be negative about it, just concerned about, we've never done this before. Uh, which isn't really the case, because if you can go back and uh, Mr. Holman, who was a great uh, historian, he's got a lot of old pictures from our history of Hampton PD, and you can all, early 1800s, we had them in from Keene, from Nashua, and there's some great pictures of those officers back in the day uh, helping patrol Hampton Beach. We're just in a different point in history uh, where Recruitment is what it is. 
Um, it's one of those issues that I, I'd love to tell you that I'm going to hire nine this year and I'm only going to lose two. The reality is we'll probably be in the five to seven range that we hire, and there's a possibility we'll lose more than that. We could go into a negative number this year. That potential exists. Well, the nice thing is that we can get them here. Yep. It, 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 it gives us good qualified people that are in town. It also gives them the opportunity to maybe see some stuff they might not see in their own communities. Yep. And uh, their ability, it, it helps their officers also. Uh, it's just all the departments that we've uh, we've engaged in this program. Uh, the University of New Hampshire, obviously, we've been doing that this for a couple of years. They are very similar in operations. They do deal with a lot of people that are young, partying, and had a little too much to drink and other and other substances. And you have to know how to deal with that when you're in a crowded situation or you become gasoline on the fire. Um, I think uh, Officer Masakis' response that day when he gets surrounded him was very cool, calm, and collected. He could have caused a greater problem if he hadn't kept his demeanor. And those are the types of people and the agencies we try to bring in. All of our other agencies are members of the Seacoast Emergency Response Team. Uh, we train with them. We work with them in other stress environments. Um, so we have a lot of faith in what those chiefs provide, and uh, bringing them in, I think, has been a, a great asset to our mission. So we'll continue the program as long as we need to. Well, knock on wood, I think yep. you had a, had a great summer season, great uh, you know, seafood festival. That went over well. I know you, uh, you brought in a lot of people for yep. other, other avenues, and uh, that worked out well, too. <coughs> so, okay. I know we have your budget. Uh, one other issue, this is kind of uh, an issue that would be part of the, we have a grant that we're going to look at at the end, but I just want to highlight to the, uh, the board, I will be coming back in in the near future on two grants that we're working on that are cooperative grants with other agencies. Um, one of them is we're working on a grant with the University of New Hampshire Police Department, Laconia and Durham Police Departments for an item called the Skywatch Tower. If you've ever traveled down to uh, New York City and Times Square, they have several of them. They're a hydraulic tower that an officer can be in it or not, and there's a number of other items in there with radios and cameras uh, for surveillance um, that we'll be utilizing. You know, when we research the grant, the different events that each of these communities host, the calendar just fell, uh, fell really well for us because Waconia has Bike Week. They'll have it up there then. We have the 4th of July Seafood Fest and our bigger events. Um, UNH will have homecoming, uh, commencement, those type of things, and Durham along with them. So it would seem like a natural fit, and uh, we threw everything in it we could think of. And uh, they said yes, $140,000 worth of equipment that we will get without any match. We just have to be able to train our folks up on how to use it. I had the uh, I was fortunate I was out in San Diego for the uh, Chiefs Conference, and uh, the guy that was actually building our unit was the gentleman on the on the floor, so I got a first-hand demonstration uh, in the convention center, and it, uh, I think it's going to be a great asset to our security features down there for the events. So, The second one is a Department of Safety Opiate Abuse Reduction Initiative. It's uh, Portsmouth, Greenland, and Hampton, uh, an amount of $59,000. This is going to be a uh, saturation uh, patrol issue where we're going to be trying to go into these areas where we've clearly identified where the drug markets are between the three communities. The reason these three communities have uh, come together is, again, when you come in in collaborative efforts, you have a better chance of getting what you're looking for, and it's the Route 95 corridor, which has you know, been clearly identified as a drug corridor uh, in New Hampshire. So these three towns have uh, put together uh, a program where we'll be going out, assigning officers on given times, working between the three communities, and trying to high hit those areas where we know the drugs are being distributed. So, okay. Excellent. Chief. That'll be coming down probably hey, within the next month. While she's here, do you want to talk a little bit about your uh, um, your community meetings that you've held? Sure. I think that's a good time to bring it up. As you recall, we, we've we been having uh, some difficulties with what we refer to as quality of life issues. It's um, you know out on uh, Mary Batchelder Road in that area of the Triangle. Um, it's the trucks and speed. And a, and a lot of other associated issues. And that's what we discovered when we had the first meeting, was it was more than one issue. Um, so I think we had roughly 35, almost 40 people for that meeting. Uh, and I thought the participation was well. I thought you know they offered some criticisms, and they would, it was done constructively. Um, 
it's my only thing. I know sometimes people get upset with us. They don't, they don't think we're there, and you know, try to explain how we operate. Uh, and I think everybody understood it, and, and we did get a lot of thanks uh, for the efforts we've been making. Uh, we do get uh, there's one neighbor out there that keeps a running log for us, and she submits that to us on a weekly basis of what she's seeing, and it's showing a reduction based on our efforts. We are also taking uh, further steps. Uh, I'm working together with the New Hampshire State Police Troop G, which Troop G is the DOT guys, the guys with the scales that work on all the truck and the commercial carriers. <coughs> they have them come in on selected dates and set up in that area to also further enhance the enforcement for trucking violations. It's kind of like liquor enforcement. We do what we do, and sometimes it works, but when entities that can take your license and your ability to drive the truck as opposed to just giving you a ticket for driving on our road, people that can actually take your license away for violations, it tends to go circles around quick. The news gets there that the state police, uh, the DOT folks are out there, and again, those are much larger fines than what we write for town ordinances. We write a $100 fine, $200 fine. These folks generally start in the area of $500. So we're going to try to utilize them to try to help get the message out to the folks that are committing the violations. So. Again, we've discussed there are a couple of issues. Uh, we need to work on the ordinance on that, though. I'll be coming forward to you hopefully in the next month or two with some suggestions on language changes to the, the current ordinance on the through trucking. Tide Mill Road, similarly, it's a trucking issue, but uh, the establishments that are being delivered to are on Tide Mill Road. We did have a representative from uh, one of the businesses, uh, Brazonics, which I think helped put a face to it. Um, and a good, another good discussion about what is actually a violation and what is not. Mm -hmm. Uh, we took some initial steps where we have a, a variable message board out there at Landing Road advising commercial carriers, deliveries to utilize Hot Arts Way to make those deliveries. And the folks I've talked to out there are also experiencing an improved situation. Again, I, I don't try to fool anybody and tell you I'm going to solve the problem and I'm going to end it. The best we're going to do is mitigate it and make it tolerable for you. Uh, but the only way we can do that is if you reach out to us and let us know. So surely on uh, Molten Road, or any other, I'll offer any other neighborhood that's experiencing these problems. If you'd like to have a neighborhood meeting, please reach out to us. Uh, we'll have you down for a cup of coffee at the training room, and we'll try to figure out a way, because there's usually more than one problem. That's one thing we are finding out. There's usually more than one problem in a neighborhood. It may start with traffic issues, but it may be wind up being something where we kind of find out there's a house that's selling drugs. Um, that's the only, you know, truly, if we don't have citizens that are willing to let us know what's going on in their neighborhoods, we drive through, we try to be where we can, but, you know, as I try to explain to some people, you know, what times are your busy times? And when they explained it, I go, that's what I thought because those are the busy times throughout the town. When I only have four to six officers working, whose neighborhood do I pick? You know, how do I work that? Um, so we try to move, move people around and cover those areas. Um, there is a warrant article moving forward uh, from the police department uh, for traffic calming devices which include a number of the uh, speed bumps and the portable uh, pole-mounted uh, radar units, which also have the ability to do um, traffic counts for us. So we'll try to put them up. And even if we don't have the uh, radar on, it'll do a traffic count for us. So we can try to establish that baseline of where the, real, the, the trouble areas that we really not need to prioritize are. Um, so I would ask folks, I would ask the board to support that warrant article when we go over them and the voters also. I uh, forget the total dollar number for do you recall not on the top of my head no. but there was uh, variable message boards involved in yeah. that um, the speed bumps and the uh, pole mounted radar items so I think those are well worth <coughs> considering the issues we're experiencing throughout town and the complaints even with a dramatic increase in activity the officers are producing we're still getting the complaints so we got to find some other measures to uh, try to alleviate those issues okay so I would assume she, she will get a hold of you and and uh, You'll take it from there. If you don't hear from me, call and ask to speak to Linda. Linda will yell at me. You'll hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay.